How's it going guys? Welcome back to another exciting video. In the last video, we ended up implementing that list view thing and then that essentially helped us with basically grabbing our list of posts and then displaying them onto our screen. So currently I have my Android emulator running and then also have a terminal open where I navigated into that um, Flutter project, which I called Newsfeed and then I did a Flutter run so that way it can basically run inside of my application. And then also I have my VS Code editor open and then inside of here, I want to make sure that I run my backend Django server. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So right now I have a terminal open in here. Let me zoom in a bit, close up that side window so you guys can see what I'm writing. So currently I have my newsfeed Flutter project, my simple server. So I'm going to navigate into my simple server. Then the next thing I want to do is activate my virtual environment. So I'm going to do that by doing source vem bin activate. And then if you're on Windows, it'll be like scripts and activate.bat, I believe. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and activate it on my Mac. So vem bin activate. So now I have this vem thing, and then I can do python manage.py run server so I can run my backend Django server. All right, so now that that's running on my local machine, I can go ahead and click this button and that's gonna make my HTTP request to my backend server. So once I do that, I'll retrieve my posts. And then currently, this is what my posts look like. So each post has some kind of like margin around it, which we can see. And then we also have this um, blue border. And then we also have some padding. And then we have so far just a text widget, which displays my title. So we have quite a bit of work to do here since I want this to look a little more like a title instead of plain text. I also wanna have the image of the post, the content and the user who made the post. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and work on in this video. So let's get right into that. So I'm gonna open up this news feed um, Flutter project, open up my lib folder, source, widgets, and then this is where we had that posts, um, posts.dart that we were working on. And now inside of here, I'm going to just close up that side window. This is where we had our list view, and then we used that builder named constructor, and then this was basically responsible for building each post. So we have this build post function that we defined, and that returns our widget, which is our post. So, so far, this thing, like I showed inside of the app, it had that margin around each post. We had that padding. We had this decoration, which is essentially my blue border. And then we also have this child property where we pass that column. And then in this column, we're gonna have the title, the image, the content, and the user. So that's what we're gonna be passing inside of this children property. And then we also, of course, have this cross axis alignment so that we align everything to the left instead of at the center. And then we use this constant value here in order to help with that. All right, so first thing that I wanna maybe do is, whoop, I wanna take a look at this text widget and see how we can make this look a little more like a title because right now it just looks like plain text. So I have my Flutter documentation open. So I'm gonna go into my widgets catalog and then side of material components. And I'm just gonna click on one of these components. It can be either one. I'll do material app. That way I have this search um, thing updated so I can search throughout the API docs. And let's go ahead and search for a text widget. So right here we see this um, text class. This is from Dart HTML. We don't want that. We want this one that's from widgets. So make sure you click on the right one. So this is the one I wanna click on. And then that should open up this text class. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and find the constructor. So here I have my text widget constructor. So one of the pieces of data that we need to pass is a string which is the data. And then we also have these named parameters. And then one I'm interested in is this style. And then this is a type text style. So let's go ahead and start working on this. So with this text widget, I'm gonna put this stuff on separate lines. And then as the next property, I wanna have that style. So I'm gonna pass, not styles, but style. And this is a type text style like we saw. So now let's go ahead and see how we use this text style class. So let's click on this text style and see what we have to do. So essentially, I just wanna make the text larger. I think that's all I wanna do. I don't care too much about making it bold and such. So let's find the constructor for this thing. And here we are, here's our constructor. So we can pass a color, background color, font size. And I think font size is what I wanna make use of. So I'm just gonna copy this font size. I'm gonna place that in here as one of the named parameters. And then for the font size, I'll pass say 25. And then if we take a look at this font size, um, this is of type double. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 25.0. And I'm gonna save that. It's gonna put it all on one line like this, which I think is fine. 
So now if I go ahead and take a look at this, so I'm gonna do a shift R in my terminal. This is gonna do a hot restart. And then I'm gonna refetch that data and see how those titles look. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we are. That looks a little bit more like a title, I think. And looks pretty good, I'd say. So the next thing I wanna do is work on that image. So right below this text widget, I'm gonna go ahead and work on my next widget, which is gonna be for my image. So to achieve this, I'm gonna use the image class. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image class and how it works. So inside of my Flutter documentation, I'm gonna search for this image, and then I want the um, from widgets. And now let's go to the constructor and take a look at this thing. All right, so we got a couple different constructors here. So we have this normal constructor creates a widget that displays an image, and then we have a couple named constructors. And one that I'm particularly interested in is this image.network. Because essentially with my um, images on the back end, I have them stored inside of um, sort of like a media folder. So if I go ahead and take a look at my simple server, when I added images, I have this media, and then they're all kind of like organized like so. So I have like the camping.jpg, the club.jpg, cottage.png, and hiking.jpg. So they're all inside of this media folder and essentially I can access them through the URL essentially. So that's the way I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then that URL is something that's actually like stored um, as the data for each of these. So as for the constructor, I'm gonna use this named constructor of .network and then we just have to pass the URL to this as a string. So let's go ahead and do image.network. That way we use that named constructor. And then inside of here, I'm gonna pass the URL. So it's gonna be HTTP. And then let me close up that side window just so we can see things. So we're gonna have, um, if you're using um, basically the iOS emulator, you wanna do localhost colon 8,000. And then plus, um, plus the post dot image URL. So this is the way that we would do this. So I'm currently running the Android emulator, so this is not gonna work for me. So if you're running iOS, do it like this. If you're running Android, instead of having localhost, do 10.0.2.2. So this is essentially the same thing that we were doing inside of the app.dart when we were getting the posts, where we were um, basically making this HTTP request to this endpoint to retrieve our posts. So this is something I went over before. So basically on Android, use 10.0.2.2. And then if you have the iOS emulator, use localhost colon 8,000. And then essentially once you actually have this as a server that, or I mean, once this backend's um, hosted on a server, then essentially this would be a domain instead. And you don't have to worry about this whole idea of the um, 10.0.2.2 and the whole localhost 8,000 thing. That's only for if you're running a server locally on your machine. So anyway, with that little aside, let's go ahead and see what this looks like and if this actually goes ahead and shows an image for us. So let me do a hot restart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make that HTTP request and let's see what this looks like. And there we are. We have our title and we have our image. So it's looking pretty good. So we're basically extracting that image now, which is what I like to see. Although one slight issue is that this right here is like really sandwiched together. So that's one thing I maybe want to fix up a bit. And a handy way to do this is using the padding widget. So let's go ahead and take a look at this padding class from widgets. And let's go down to that constructor. Here we are. And then I can basically pass a child to this and also a padding property. And then this padding property is going to be this like edge insets thing and that is required to pass to this. And then we can take a look at this edge insets geometry thing just to kind of reiterate this. So this essentially is an abstract class and then it has some implementers like the edge insets and that's one thing that we were making use of in order to do this like margin and padding stuff. So we're gonna handle this the same sort of way. So I'm gonna go back inside of my post.dart and then I'm gonna wrap this text widget in that padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and define this padding which we have this padding thing auto filled for me. And then as for the padding, I'm gonna use my edge insets. And then I'm gonna use the named constructor of only. So I can pass to the bottom of this thing a little bit of margin, which or I guess like padding technically, which is gonna be um, 20 pixels. And then I also need to pass the child property. And then the child property is going to be my text widget. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut this. 
put a comma after here. And then inside of my child, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this text widget and fix up this indenting. And then that should be pretty good. And maybe 20 might be a little too much, so I'll do something like 10. I think that should be pretty good. So let's take a look at how this looks now. So I'm gonna do my hot restart and then refetch and then make sure that everything looks good here. So let's fetch that data. And there we are, I think the spacing is pretty nice. So now the next step is to get that content to show. So that's what I'm gonna handle next. So below this image, the next thing inside of this children list is gonna be my content. So this is also gonna be a text widget. And then inside of this text widget, uh, looks like I got some extra stuff here, so there you go. Inside of this text widget, what I'm gonna have is the post.content. And then I also wanna have maybe slightly bigger text. So I'm also gonna pass in that style property like I did before with the text style, where I'm gonna pass a font size. And for this, I'll do 16 pixels. And I think that should look pretty good. And then finally, the last thing I want is on the user. So that's another thing I need. So that's also gonna be my text widget. And then this auto filling is a little annoying. So this text widget is gonna have my post.user. And then I'm also gonna put a style to this thing. And let me just copy this style, paste it in here. And then instead of 16 pixels, I'll do say 14. And I think that should be pretty good. So let's take a look at what we've got. I'll do my hot restart. And then we're essentially gonna see how it looks and then fix it up a bit. All right, so now we have all the data, which is pretty nice. So I have my title, my image, my content, and my user, but I want this still to look a little bit nicer. So I want some kind of padding at the bottom of this image, also at the bottom of this content. And then I also want this user to have like a user icon beside it. I think that would look pretty nice. So let's get working on that. So as for this image, I'm gonna wrap it in a padding class like I did with the text widget above. And then this, I'm gonna have a padding and then I'm also gonna have the child. And then the child is just gonna be this whole image part. So I'm gonna cut that, put it inside of this child part, and then put a comma after this padding. And then as for the padding itself, I'm just gonna have edge insets. I'm just gonna copy this one and then place it here. And then at the bottom, I'll do say like 20 pixels at the bottom for the padding. And then after that, we're gonna have this content. All right, so there's that. Now I also want spacing between the content and the user. So once again, I'm gonna wrap this text widget inside of a padding class. So I'll do my padding, put this stuff on separate lines, put a comma after here. I'm gonna have my child property like before. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this text widget. And then I'm gonna place it inside of this child and fix up the indenting. And then as for the padding here, I'll put a little bit more padding. So I'll do edge insets dot only. And then I'm gonna pass that bottom named parameter and I'll do say 40 pixels. So let's go ahead and save this and see how the spacing looks. So I'm gonna do my hot restart, refetch that data, and let's see how that looks. And all right, I think I'm pretty happy with the spacing right now. So we got the title looking good, we've got the image looking good, the content looks good. Now the last step is just to make this user look good. So I wanna have that icon and then the user. So that's gonna be our last step here. So in order to achieve this, essentially I'm gonna have two pieces of data next to each other. So essentially I'm gonna have a row. So previously I was using this column to display things in a column. Now I wanna basically display the icon and the user in a row. So I'm gonna use the row class in order to achieve this. And then this row has this children property, just like we had with the column, where we had this children where it was a list of widgets. So that's also another thing I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put this generic type of widget. And then inside of here, I can just go ahead, pass my user icon, and then my text widget, which has my user. And then that's essentially gonna display this in a row. So it's as easy as that. So let me go ahead, grab this text and I'll place it in here. So that's gonna have my user data. Let's go ahead and just display this icon. So I'm gonna use my icon class. And in here I'm gonna um, grab icons.account and then circle. So this is the icon that I think looks pretty nice for um, kind of showing that this is a user. So I'm gonna save this and let's see what this looks like. 
So I'm going to do my hot restart. I'm going to refetch my data. And all right, looks pretty good. So now the thing I want to handle is having a little bit of spacing between these two things now. So previously we were doing spacing between things in the column. Now I want to do spacing between things in the row. So now I'm going to go ahead and in order to achieve that, I can either wrap this icon thing inside of padding or this text thing inside of padding. I think I'll do the text inside of padding. So I'll go ahead, define my padding like I've been doing before. And then inside of here, I'm going to have my padding, which I'm going to have edge insets dot only and in this case I want to have the left property which is just gonna have let's say 4.0 I found looked pretty good I'm gonna have my child property which is gonna be this text widget so I'm gonna cut that and place it inside of this child fix up my indenting and then there we go now this should look pretty good so let's take a look at how our final app looks I'm gonna do my hot restart refetch this data and there we go. Now I have a little bit of spacing between this user icon and then the user name. So yeah, these posts now look pretty proper. So I have this nice looking border around it. The title looks good. The image looks good. The content, all the spacing looks nice. And these now actually look like posts. So yeah, that's basically everything for this video. So now we've saw how to basically make an HTTP request. And um, actually one thing I'm kind of noticing, which would be kind of nice is to also have a little bit more spacing here. So maybe that's like a last tweak that I can also kind of do so let's go ahead and fix that up so essentially uh, let's see so I placed everything inside of a container and then in order to kind of fix up the spacing I can maybe put a little bit more to the bottom just a small tweak to make and I think that should look pretty good then actually no this right here is for the post itself we want to do this inside of our app so let's take a look real quick and just kind of fix up this last thing so let's see right here we have our body which is our posts and then this I can kind of wrap in like say padding and then this is going to be the child to that padding and then I can have my padding which is going to be my edge insets dot only bottom and say like 10.0 or something uh, will that be enough maybe a little more like 20.0 probably and let me also put a comma after here. So when I save, it's formatted nicely. So let me do a hot restart and just see if it looks pretty good. All right, so now if I scroll down, there we go. I think that looks a little bit nicer. That way, this isn't going like right over. Once I scroll, the post goes a little bit over this button. So I think that's pretty good. You could even add a little bit more, but I'm not going to focus too much on these little tweaks. This is just to kind of demonstrate how you might want to make these small little tweaks to your application. So anyway, we saw now how to make an HTTP request to a backend server running locally on our machine, which is pretty cool. We also saw how to display these posts inside of a list. And now we have a nice looking app where we can scroll through these and essentially have posts. And whenever someone adds a post, we can go refetch this data. And then we're going to have the updated posts on our app. So yeah, that's going to be everything for this video then. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. If you did, make sure to leave this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Also, hit that notification bell to receive notifications whenever a new video comes out. Also, I have links in my description so you can like the Facebook page, join the Facebook group. That way, if you have questions generally on web development, app development, or anything related to a tutorial I've created, you can basically reach out to me personally and I can help you out. So anyway, that will be everything, and I will see you guys in the next series.